Sing with us, will you? Revive. Stand and join us. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive us. Won't you revive us, O oh Lord? you're here tonight. Won't you be seated? Thank you for joining with us in song to start things off. Listen to the choir as we sing, please.
Well, we serve a holy God, amen? And uh, He's coming again one day. I love what the Bible says, that when He comes, I want Him to find me doing. Doing something for Him. Looking for His coming, but doing something for Him. And uh, if He came tonight, here's good news, He finds you in church. But the best news would be that He would find you in church, ready to meet Him. And I pray that if you're not, tonight's the night. Are you glad to be here? Amen. We're glad you're here. Why don't you stand with us? Our choir is going to go down, and we want to give you an opportunity to fellowship a little bit. So why don't you fellowship with each other, then we'll come back and worship together. with us as we sing. He's worthy, God's worthy, almighty creator, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Holy, holy Lord God almighty, which was and is and is to come. He's worthy, God's worthy, almighty creator, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Holy, God's not going anywhere. He's the same today as he was yesterday. He's going to be the same tomorrow. He's going to be here. We serve an awesome, awesome God. Amen. So glad you're here tonight. Ushers, if you will, begin making your way down. We'll go into our offering time tonight. Again, we hope that you will give. Everything we take up in the offering during our revival meetings goes to our speaker. 
So please give as God lays on your heart. Brother Curtis has been doing a fantastic job ministering to our hearts in preaching and from the Word. And we would like for him to have a wonderful uh, gift from our church tonight. So bless him, if you will, if he's blessed you. Thank you again for being here. Let's ask God's blessing on the offering. Brother Doug Morrison, would you pray and ask the blessing, please? You may be seated. I have a story to tell you. It may sound strange, but it's true. And Bartimaeus was blind and of no earthly good. The pain in his face mirrored the pain in his soul. There's not much sympathy down by the side of the road. But something great happened when Jesus passed by, he silenced the crowd when he heard the man's cry. A lifetime of darkness in a moment was gone. He smiled as the glory was shown. Master, I see for you made me whole. of no earthly good. Sin's great afflictions had pierced the bonds of my soul and left me there waiting to die by the side of life's road. But something great happened as my Jesus passed by. Oh, he silenced the heavens when he heard my cry. And through endless ages, his praises I'll sing. For Jesus has brought life to me. Master, I sing, for you made me whole. I'm free by the power of Jesus' name. I'm free from. 
from the darkness, free from the shame, Master, I see. Master, I see. That was good, wasn't it? something new every day. I didn't know he could sing like that till today. I am impressed. That was awesome. Stand with us and let's sing this together. I believe in the sun. I believe Luke chapter 10, verse 30. Let's stand together as we read the Word of God. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. There have been 87 people tell me there's a clock up there. Uh, I can't see that far. You know, I'm old. 
and I can't see. What, what do you want me to do? Okay, Scott, what, what is it? Turn the mic on. Okay, Mr. Control Freak. Yeah, I, you know. Hey, your people love it. Yeah, I mean, they, they love to see somebody mouse you down. You know, they love it. Your wife even likes it. You know. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 30. Let's, let's, let's look at this. I believe we're going to see uh, in this passage, maybe you're going to see it a little bit different tonight after we get done with it, and maybe you've seen it before. And you say, well, that's the kind of way it is in every sermon you preach. But, but uh, in Luke chapter 10, verse 30, it says, And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, departed, leaving him, Half dead. I want you to see that verse. I want you to see that. Half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him. He passed by on the other side. By the way, aren't you glad the story didn't end here? Aren't you glad that your story didn't end here? But notice in verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, I love this because I know who that certain Samaritan is. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil, won't you see that? In oil and wine. And set him on his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Go with me. Then we see that word, half dead. Then we see, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, gave them to the host, said to them, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay you. I heard someone else say that. There's three statements I want you to see in this passage tonight. Half dead, and took care of him, and when I come again. See, we've got a picture here of a person who's a victim of circumstances out of his control. I want you to hear me. He was a victim of circumstances out of his control. By the way, this wasn't a dumb choice that he made. He was a victim. Oh, I've heard guys get on this passage and say, well, he shouldn't have been going down there at that, that, that time of night. This guy made a poor choice. He shouldn't have been on that road because that road was noted. Let me tell you something. That dog won't hunt simply because if this guy was doing something wrong, then so was the priest and so was the Levite and so was the Samaritan. So I want, I want you to see that, that, ain't, that that's not been the right teaching down through the years. This guy didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He fell among thieves. He didn't want this. He didn't plan this. He didn't ask for this. Folks, some things are going to happen to us that are beyond our control. Sometimes the world deals us an unfair hand. Sometimes we find ourselves all beat up, hurting in a bad way. I want to talk to you. I'm going to let you sit down. My wife I evidently looked on YouTube last night and she called me about uh, 1 o'clock this morning. She said, let the people sit down. So I'm a, you can thank Karen. Wait, we're going to pray for you sit down. We're going to thank Karen Linton for y'all getting to sit down what, for a, a shorter time. Okay. Lord, thank you for this day. God, I pray now that you'll help us as we speak. I pray, God, to help us to be comfortable as we stand behind this holy desk. And I pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit will lead us. Let, let, Lord, let this be out of the overflow tonight. God, there's a message here. My goodness, there's a message here that will speak to our hearts if we'll listen. And I pray, dear God, right now in Jesus' name that you will speak to our hearts on the inside while I speak on the outside. And God, I pray that there's somebody here lost, somebody here that's abused, someone here that's violated, someone here that's found themselves in a bad way, someone here that's facing circumstances they don't think you're going to get through, someone, Lord, that's in great need. I pray that tonight you're going to speak to their heart and let them see that it's not as bad as it seems. 
It's not as bad as it seems. And God, I'll tell them why tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Sometimes we find ourselves just all beat up and hurting and in a bad way. The Bible says they stripped him of his raiment. He was violated and he was naked. I mean, they take from him everything he has, even his clothes. I mean, he's been taken extreme advantage of. You may say, well, no one is ever going to hurt me. No one is ever going to take advantage of me like that. Okay, here's what you need to do. You either need to die right now or you need to never join a Baptist church. Because if you live in the real world, it is going to happen. Amen? It is going to happen. Well, it says they stripped him of his raiment, and then it says they wounded him. Wounded him. The reason why I know, he, by the way, this wasn't just a surface wound. This wasn't just a little scratch. And the reason why I know that, because the Bible says when the Good Samaritan got there, he poured the oil in. These were gaping open wounds that he literally poured, not on, but in. He poured the wounds in. Now, hear me say something. He's so deeply wounded that the healing has got to start on the inside and work its way out to the outside. That is good. It's going to be good. There's some of you tonight that are hurting so bad. You've got a bad marriage. You've got a relationship problem. You've got a sin problem. You've got an addiction problem. You've got a need in your life. And you, my friend, have been beat up so badly by the booger man that I guarantee you that you need some oil poured in that wound because you need the healing to start on the inside and work its way out. To the, I mean, one of the big problems we got is we try to put Band-Aids on gaping wounds. We try to put Band-Aids and a little Neosporin on a heart problem that's over that's deep down on the inside. It said he poured the oil in because it was a bad wound. Well, let's look at this. This, world, this world's full of people that have been violated, deeply violated. Listen to me, listen to me. There's people that have been deeply violated. Surface meds aren't gonna ha- ain't going to help. Some are carrying wounds that are deep, hurting wounds, disappointments, violations, and, and by the way, there's been times in this building, some of you, every time that you think you're getting ready to shout and you think you're just about over it, the old devil, be, he begins to rattle those chains and he, he pulls off a scab and you start to bleed all over again. Maybe 20, 30, 40 years later. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Those old wounds that never did get tra- treated the right way, they need something that will go deep and cure them on the inside, work the way out. Well, it says they... They uh, wounded him. They stripped him his raiment. Then it says they depart. They leave him to die by the side of the road like a dog. Total desperation and despair. The man can't help himself. It's easy for us to say so, that to someone who's deeply hurt or, or somebody that, I want you to listen to me, church. It's easy for us to say to somebody that's deeply hurt, deeply wounded, struggling with something, it's easy for us to fold our, our pharisaical arms and say, well, you just need to get over it. Some can't. The wound's too deep. You hear me? Some can't just say, get over it because the wound's too deep. The hurt's too bad. So bad that you cannot help yourself. And then there's some do-gooders that'll say, oh, God helps those that help themselves. Baloney. God helps them that can't help themselves. I mean, we're lost in our sin. We couldn't get to God, the Bible says. And God came down to us where we were. The world needs to hear that. The old devil's telling him. I can see the old booger man as he, as he kind of hunkers up next to, the, to this bleeding, wounded, naked man. And the devil's telling him, nobody cares if you live or die. Oh, here he is, wounded and naked and abandoned, about to die. And the folks then start coming by. And here's where we kind of start to talk about our message. The first guy that comes by is the priest. The priest. He's a religious person. He's a guy that's got religion. Listen, if anybody ought to be able to help, it ought to be the religious guy. I mean, hey, I mean, don't that make good logic? I mean, if anybody can help, it ought to be the religious person. A priest is someone who goes to God on behalf of people. And if anybody ought to be helping him, it ought to be the religious folk. 
Now, let me tell you something about this priest. He had religion without relationship. A man's whole life is supposed to be helping people. I mean, that, that's what a priest does, right? He's supposed to help. His whole life is supposed to be about helping people. You may have never looked at this this way, but I want you to for a minute. Some of the meanest, most contrary, meanest people in the world go to church every Sunday. Time out. Let me tell you something. We call ourselves fundamentalists, and we like that term, and conservative, and we, we, we love terms like that, standards and convictions. and blah, blah, blah. You know, we, we, we like that. But let me tell you something. Whatever term you use, standards, conviction, religion, conversion, commitment, whatever term you put on it, if it makes you mean and hurtful and crude and rude and condescending, it didn't come from God. Religion don't help. If anybody should have been able to help, it ought to have been the priest. Man has been beaten, robbed, hurt, wounded, bleeding, and naked, and ha ha and then here comes along the Levite. Well, the Levite is someone who's supposed to put the Word of God in the language of the people. This man knew the Old Testament. He had read the book of Isaiah, and he'd already read where Jesus would heal broken people and set at liberty those that are captive. He had read the Psalms where, the, where he says the Lord would be a refuge, a shield, and a strength, a tower, a helper, and a shepherd. He had it all in his head, but he didn't have it in his heart. Let me say something else to you. Time out again. Truth without grace. Truth without mercy. Truth without love will cut you to the bone and leave you there. But aren't you glad the psalmist said in Psalm 85, 10, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what grace does. See, here's a picture of total, utter helplessness, despair, hurt, Pain, total despair. He's naked, wounded, deserted. He's in a mess, just like some of you are in a mess in this building tonight. And he said, but wait, Brother Curtis, wait. You said this guy has, has been robbed? Yep, he's been robbed. He's been violated? Yes. He's a victim? Yes. He's total desperation? Yep. Naked? Yep. Wounded? Yep. I said all that. He's helpless, deserted, he's depressed? Yes, all the above. All the above. Would you agree? All the above. But I've come here to Newburn, North Carolina tonight to tell you that no matter how bad it looks, well, glory, no matter how bad it sounds, no matter how bad it smells, no matter how bad it appears, no matter how bad it tastes, no matter how bad it hurts, no matter how bad it seems, I've come to tell you that it's not as bad as it seems. They left him half dead. Brother Curtis, half dead is bad. Yeah, but it's not as bad as being all the way dead. It's not as bad as it seems. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Finally got to my message. It's not as bad as it seems. Well, it says they departed. I come to hear, hey, listen, I come to tell somebody tonight. Your marriage is really having trouble. It's not as bad as it seems. Oh, your finances are going south. It's not as bad as it seems. Oh, but I've got a sick. The doctor gave me a bad report. It's not as bad as it seems. I've come to tell you on the authority of God's Word, on the illustration of this story I've read to you, that it's not as bad as it seems. Number one, they departed leaving him half dead. Here's my message. You're still alive. You may be half dead, but you're still alive. This old boy's laying there. He's wounded and bleeding and all beat up. He's in a bad way, but he's still alive. I, oh, I want to crawl up beside old Bubba. Because we're in North Carolina, that's what we can call him tonight. We're going to call him Bubba. 
Oh, I want to crawl up beside old Bubba in that ditch. And I want to say to him, Bubba, I know you're stripped and robbed. I know the sun is baking your parched flesh. You're naked, you're hurt, you're wounded, bleeding. You've been cut to the bone. And I know the buzzards are circling and the undertaker is on his way. The divorce lawyer has already got the papers drawn up. The death rattle is in your throat. I know you're hurting, but you're still alive. You're still alive, Bubba. Oh, preacher, I come into this house today. Some of you say to me, preacher, I came in this house today and I'm just about that far from throwing in the towel. I heard somebody say that just yesterday. Oh, but God, give us a word. Preach, I'm just about that far from throwing in the towel. Oh, but praise God, you've got about that much left. And little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or faith. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Oh, thank God you've got about that much left. Oh, about that far from giving up. About that far from turning back. I've come to tell you, thank God you've got that much left. Preacher, that's not a lot. Oh, have I told you tonight about my awesome God who don't need that much. Oh, have I told you about my Jesus? All he needs is a stick. And he can confound Pharaoh and all his soothsayers. He can take a sling and a rock and kill a giant. All he needs is a little meal and a little bit of oil in a cruise. All he needs is a cross and three rusty nails and he can save the entire world. He don't need much. He don't need a lot. God can reach in the middle of your desperation, in the middle of your despair, your hurt, your need. You're still alive, Bubba. You're still alive. God still cares. He still loves you. He still has a plan for your life. Are you listening to me, somebody? God sent me here tonight to tell you He's not finished with you yet. Oh, He's not finished with you yet. He's still got a plan and a purpose for your life. You're still alive. What Bubba don't know what old Bubba don't know is that part that ain't dead yet is just enough for God to reach down and pick up and put him on the road to full recovery. Listen. You remember what Jesus said in Luke chapter 22? Y'all got your Bibles open there? Is that boy keeping up up there tonight? No, he ain't. I don't see. He finally got it, but I needed it 10 minutes ago. You ever had your whiskers pulled out, boy? You remember when Jesus said in Luke chapter 22, he said in verse 31, The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. By the way, when God says something twice, you better listen with both ears. I can hear old Simon say, well, what does the devil want with me? Simon, Simon, the devil has desired to sift you like wheat. Simon looks up and says, what, what do I do to him? Why does he want, why does he want to mess with me? Let me slow down here a minute. Folks, I'm old enough to remember when women cooked. I'm an old man. Some of you guys just sitting there like this. <laughs> Mama would take that flour, we got it in big bags, and then you'd take the bags of flour and make dresses out of them. You know, that's the way I was raised up. And uh, she'd have this big bag of flour, and she'd put in the sifter. And I can see Mama and I can see Grandma do, doing that as they prepared to bake them homemade pies and those homemade cakes and, and those homemade biscuits from scratch. I mean, homemade, mm. But Bible sifting is different than that. See, this word he's using here, 
They would bring in those sheaves of wheat. You say, where are you going with this? Just wait. I'm talking to somebody here. There's somebody in this building that needs this as bad as I do. And I need it pretty bad. But they bring in those sheaves of wheat. And they'd put them on a threshing floor. And they'd take off their shoes and they had sticks. And they would beat it and they would stomp it. And they'd beat it and they'd stomp it and beat it and take sticks and beat it and stomp it some more. Jesus said, Simon the devil has a heartbeat for you. He wants to slam you down on the threshing floor of life. He wants to pounce on you, beat you, stomp you, beat you, stomp you, hurt you, beat you, wound you, hurt you. He wants to beat you up, Simon. And I want to say something to you. That's what the devil wants to do to every one of us. He hates your guts. He said he wants to pound you and grind you. He's talking to Simon, and Simon knew what this was all about. He said, Simon, and when you're laying there on that threshing floor, brother, and, and you think the devil has beaten the God-given life out of you, boy, you need to remember in verse 32, Jesus says, but I have prayed for you. While you're down there getting beat, while you're down there getting stomped by the devil, Jesus says, I want you to remember that I have prayed for thee that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren converted now folks that don't mean when you finally get saved <laughs> okay that ain't what that means you either is or you ain't Dr. Linton says you either saved or you ain't saved okay it means when you change from one form to another. That's what the word convert means. Now, now, what, now what do you, here, and let's give you a little lesson. What, does, what do you change wheat into? Bread. Bread. That, that, that's, what you, that's what you turn wheat in. You take it out of it. You put it on the threshing floor. You beat it. You stomp it. And the end result, what you want to get out of it is bread. Y'all eat? flour here in North Carolina I want bread what do you change wheat into bread and what do you do when you eat the bread you get fat the righteous shall be made fat the Bible says the folks thin may be in but fat is where it's at Well, glory. You convert that wheat into bread, and you consume that bread, and you get strength and nourishment from that bread. Simon, you remember that while you're being thrashed, I'm talking to somebody right now, you need to get this. Simon, Simon, you need to remember that, boy, while you're being thrashed and pounded and beaten, when you're being stomped, and remember, I've got a plan for your life. I prayed for you. I've got a plan for your life. And when you're changed into another form, you will strengthen the brethren. When I make some good bread out of you, you're going to strengthen the brethren. Wow, that is so awesome. I can see the old devil. He picks up Peter. And by that fire, you remember when, when he denied the Lord? You remember that's what Jesus is talking about. He said, I can see the old booger man. And he takes, he takes Peter and he slams him down by that fire that night. He hits him. He kicks him in the side. He stomps on him and beats him and thrashes him. And I can see Peter looking up from the floor saying, Lord, where are you at? Anybody ever been there? I can see Peter there. He's being kicked and stomped by the devil. Oh, Lord, where are you at? I'm getting beat up here. But I can see Jesus in the shadows saying, Go ahead, stomp him, devil. Go ahead and beat him up some more. Go ahead. There's bread in there. I got a preacher in there. So, well, glory. I got a preacher in there somewhere. I got a pastor in there. Go ahead and stomp him real good. There's bread and hit him again, devil. Hit him again. Everything's going to be all right because there's bread in there. The devil stomps him one last time, goes back to hell, and God steps up out of the shadows and picks up what's left. You ought to shout it right there. He picks up what's left. I said, he picks up what's left. 
and bakes him in Pentecost fire and butters him up with Pentecost Holy Ghost and brought him up one Sunday and said, Preach, boy. He preached Jesus and 3,000 people got saved that day. And then later, 2,000 more. And by the time he preaches five times, 10,000 people have got saved. So I can see that old lanky preacher get up on the day of Pentecost. That old ex-cussing preacher. Right? That's before he got converted. That's before he got changed into another form. I can see that old ex-cussing lanky preacher get up and Sister Wigglejaw turns to Brother Know-It-All and they look over at Brother Sis, at, at Sister Tell-It-All and they say, well, I wouldn't walk across the street to hear him. Didn't he deny the Lord? That's before he got sifted. I'm talking to somebody tonight in your situation. That's before he got sifted. God used him. He's still using him today. Hey, that's before he got sifted. Hey, you may be beat up, bleeding, bruised, wounded, deep, hurt, half dead, but you're still alive. You're still alive. And God has still got a plan for your life, sister. God has still got a plan for your life, even though you're half dead. Well, number two, somebody can help you. Verse 32 and verse 33. Who is it? Well, who do you think it is? Religion came by and they, religion goes over and the Bible says, passes by on the other side. Are y'all ready, ready to hear this preaching? Are you ready to hear a message from God? Listen to me. Religion comes by and the Bible says right there that they pass by on the other side of the road. He's laying over in the ditch half dead. They pass by on the other side. Levite comes by. He goes over and looks at him. Isn't that what it says? He stared at him. Kind of like sinners get looked at when they come to church. What are they doing here? They don't look like us. New life, if you're going to be the church that God wants you to be, let me, let me talk to the church a little bit here for a minute. Time out. This don't go on my time. When we really start being the church that God wants us to be, there's going to be some people walk in here that's wounded, beat up, half dead. They don't look like us. They don't smell like us. They don't talk like us. They don't have the same worldview we've got. But we don't need to just stare at them like this old boy did. That's not what they need. They don't need somebody, hey, they've been stared at enough out there in the world. They're already hurting bad enough. They've already got gaping wounds. and They've they, they already been wounded. They're already in a bad way. They don't need for us to go, you ever been in a hospital and, and people just come in and look at you? You know, I've been in the hospital a few times lately. And I, you know, I, I had some guys come in my hospital room just last time I was in there. They came in there. And I finally opened up one eye and I said, quit just standing there looking at me. Pray or do what you're going to do, but don't look at me. I want to crawl up beside old Bubba in that ditch. I want to get up close to Bubba's ear and say, hold on, Bubba. Somebody else is coming. Hold on, Bubba, somebody else is coming. It ain't as bad as it seems. Hold on, Bubba, somebody else is coming down the Jericho Road. Hold on, Bubba, he's getting nearer, he's getting closer. Hey, he's different from those other fellas. He, he walks different, he looks different. He, he, he gets there and he sees the same thing the other guy saw. Only the same naked, bleeding, wounded, hurting, half-dead man. When the other man saw him, it turned their stomach. But when this man saw him, it touched his heart. That's the good Samaritan I'm talking about. 
Folks, people don't know how much, listen, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. They all saw the same hurt man. But the Samaritan looked at him different. First of all, he came to where he was. I preached a little bit to the chapel this morning about that. He came to where he was. He didn't minister from a distance. Brother David, you remember, I know you can. We Remember, we started bringing in the homeless. Uh, the city shut down our homeless minister that we had downtown. Had a big building downtown. And we'd, we'd had as many as 586 of those homeless guys there. And God blessed and God, God's used that ministry down through these many years. But finally, the mayor of Tulsa finally got a shut down, said she didn't want that many people gathering at downtown Tulsa in the brow of the Williams Center, that big oil company there. They finally got a shut down. And so we had to move the homeless ministry to our church. And I remember as we started you know, figuring out how the logistics did, we didn't have room for them. You know, the buildings were full back in those days. And so but we started bringing them in anyway. And, and I remember I lost some people during those times because they, they'd come in and them homeless guys didn't, didn't smell very good. They didn't look very good. They didn't sound very good. I mean, that, 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 that they just kind of had a, a, an aura about them as, as they walked. And I, and I had some people say, I'm not going to sit with those people. Now, you can sit and act all holy if you want to, but there's a bunch of you right now in this building just like that. It's okay if I do it, but you just soon somebody else do it and not, and, and, and not new life. A lot of people around this country that are down and out. There's a lot of people in this city right now that are dirty, that are hurting, that are half dead, that are bleeding. they got problems in their life, and, and they're different from us. But let's go on. He came to where he was. He was willing to get down in the ditch where the guy was. Folks, by the time that, that they get here, listen to me closely, church, listen. By the time that the people get here to us, they're already wounded. we got to be willing to mess with messed up people. Jesus still saves, delivers, rescues. His blood still cleanses from all sin. So Jesus, the good Samaritan, he came to where? the man was. Did you get that? I'll go on if you got that. Well, then next of all, the Bible says he bound up his wounds. Priest and Levite left him like they found him. But this guy, he took white linen, wrapped him up where he was messed up. And when he got done, you could no longer see the wounds. When the Samaritan got done, you couldn't see the wounds. Because you see, those wounds have been covered up. You missed the time to shout right then. Glory. You ought to have seen me before Jesus came and wrapped me up. Oh, you wouldn't believe me. If you could see a picture of me then and see a picture of me now, both you, you wouldn't believe the difference that Jesus made in my life. You know, because the, the one you're looking at right now, I've been all covered up. I've been covered. Oh, hey, you, you wouldn't want me up preaching here tonight. I was wounded, naked, hurting, dying, bleeding. But when God sees me, He don't see me naked and bloody and deserted. I've been fancied up. Listen to me. I've been fancied up by the bloody cords of Calvary. My sins have been atoned. Hey, I'm not what I used to be. He bound up his wounds. Well, next of all, it sees he pours the oil in, not on. This old boy has such a past. He's got such a rap sheet. This old boy's been victimized, violated. He's almost dead. He's got to have something that'll get way down on the inside. Some of you, right, I want to say this again. Some of you in this building have been, you've been trying to put on religious band-aids and religious first aid kits. But one night you got under the spout where the glory was running out and God poured it in. You remember that day? God poured it in. I said God poured it in. Aren't you glad someone can pour, can, can, can pour his life and his love into you and get you out of that ditch? Salvation and restoration is an inside job. He poured it in. He poured in the oil and wine. 
The oil is the Holy Ghost. Fresh oil, we can preach about that. Be not drunk with wine and success, but be ye being filled with the Spirit. Hey, no wound or hurt that the Holy Ghost can't help you get over. You hear me? God can do more in five seconds than we can do in a lifetime of trying to get over something. That bitterness you can't get over, God can get you over that right just like that. That unforgiveness you've got in your heart, God can get you through that just like that if you'll just get under the spout where the Holy Ghost is coming out. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to hurry. I'm going to skip some here. It's not as bad as it seems. Then it says he put him on his own beast. He put him on his own beast. He gave him a ride. It's 8 o'clock. It said he gave him a ride. He didn't have to walk on his own. No, my daddy's favorite song was, I won't walk without Jesus. I won't talk without Jesus. He puts him on his own beast. Now listen to me. Bubba's got salvation, jubilation, inspiration, sanctification, purification, jubilation, and now he's got transportation. And he brought him, now here's, here's why we need you to be real attentive. He brought him. He didn't leave him like he found him. And the Bible says he took him to an inn. Folks, an inn is a home away from home while you're on your way home. That's what an inn is. It's a home away from home while you're on your way home. The church is the inn. You already figured out who the Samaritan is. You ain't getting it. The good Samaritan brings these hurting people to the inn. Some of you tonight are wounded, bleeding. You're just about throwing the towel. I mean, your hurt's so bad that you can't get over it. But God sent me here to tell you it ain't as bad as it seems because you're still alive. And there's somebody that wants to help you. That's point number two. There is somebody that wants... Hey, the church. Brother Pastor, have you, have you found out yet in your ministry? A lot of times the church, they're not the ones that want to help. A lot of times they look at you over there. They kick you while you're over there on the side of the road. It's happened to me a bunch of times down through the year. I've had people tell stuff on me. I've had people say stuff about me that hurt me. I didn't think I was ever going to get over. But you, you know what? The, uh, what? But there's some of you, you're half dead, but you're still alive. But there's somebody that wants to help you. And he brings him to the end. Folks, the church ought to be a place where hurting people can recover from a messed up life. And the Bible says that the Good Samaritan says, hey, he says, innkeeper. You hear me, Mr. Innkeeper? He says, you take care of him. Mr. Innkeeper, did you hear what I just said? The Good Samaritan says, you take care of him. But he didn't stop there. He said something else here. He took out two pence. He gave him what he needed before he left. You'll get that in a minute. The good Samaritan gave the innkeeper everything he needed to take care of this hurting man before he left. Oh, I'm getting, I'm starting to feel this. I really am. And then he says, Scott, he says, if you need more, I'll, t I'll, I'll give you more. <laughs> he says, I'll give you what you need, but if you need more while you're taking care of these wounded, naked, destitute, bleeding people, he says, if you need more, I'll take care of it. I'll provide you with everything you need. You hear what he said, church? Some of you just want to pull, your, we want to pull our hair out sometimes with budget. I was on uh, the, the phone today with one, one of my uh, uh, financial people, you know, we got this doing, got that doing. We, we've got the old building, you know, didn't sell. We, we got, I mean, we got you know, a million dollar hickeys, you know what I mean? Just million dollar stuff. 
And then here the Lord brings this message to my heart and just gets all over me. And the Lord says to Curtis Linton, he says, God said, I'll give you what you need, and if you need more, I, I, I'll provide that. Folks, that's good. I don't know. I don't care where you're at. Now, the last thing he heard the Samaritan say before he walked out the door, he says, when I come again. <laughs> it's not as bad as it seems. Why? Because you're still alive. It's not as bad as it seems. Why? Because somebody cares about you. It's not as bad as it seems. Why? Because he's coming back. He's coming back. Let me close this. He says, when I come again. Folks, when he comes back, the ditch won't matter. <laughs> when he comes back, the wounds won't matter. The hurts won't matter. One glimpse of the Savior's dear face is going to make everything all right. When the Samaritan first found him, he was half dead. And he wasn't fully aware of what's going on. You weren't either. But when he came to, he's laying there in the innkeeper's inn. I can see Bubba laying there. He's all bound up and doctored up, fancied up. But he hadn't come to yet. And I can see old Bubba as he begins to come around, begins to come to. And when he came to, he realized what a deal he got. I believe he came conscious and he looked around and says, well, what happened? What happened? Where am I? Looked over at the end and said, who are you? How did I get here? Wouldn't you have loved to have heard the conversation? The innkeeper said, you hear me? The innkeeper's got a message. The innkeeper said, boy, Bubba, you were on the Jericho Road and some thieves jumped on you and beat you and hurt you and wounded you and cut you and stripped you, robbed you and left you to die on the side of the road like a dog. But son, but son, while you were laying there half dead, this man came along and he saw you. He looked beyond your fault and he saw your need. He did, hey, he didn't even know you, but he cared for you. He got down where you were in that ditch. He bound up your wounds. He poured in oil and wine. He picked you up in his own arms, put you on his own beast, carried you to this inn. He gave me the resources to care for you. And sir, I've been taking care of you ever since. I can see old Bubba laying there, looking around, looking at the bandages and noticing he's all cleaned up and got on new clothes. And I can see old Bubba say, wow, wow, where's he at? Innkeeper says he's probably helping somebody else. Bubba says, you know what, I sure wish I could tell him thanks I sure would like to see him someday I wish I could just show my appreciation to him for what he's done for me I just can't wait to thank him Bubba have I got news for you you're going to get your chance because the last thing he said before he left is when I come again. Bubba, he's coming back and you can thank him all you want to thank him. You can praise him for a million years. 
It's not as bad as it seems. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. God sent me here for you. It's not as bad as it seems. You may be half dead, but you're still alive. It's not as bad as it seems. Somebody cares about you, and somebody wants to help you, and His name is Jesus. It's not as bad as it seems. Because He's coming back, praise God. He's coming back. Oh, what a moment when we see Jesus. The man was too hurt to fight and too far gone to help himself. All he could do was lay in the arms, lean on the good Samaritan, and let him do for him what he couldn't do for himself. And I close tonight with this. Preacher, when am I going to get over this mess? Quit fighting. Holy Ghost speaking. Quit fighting. Quit resisting. And just lean over on Jesus. That come directly from heaven's oven. Quit your fighting. Quit your struggling. Just lean over on his arms. And let him take care of you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. It's not as bad as it seems. You're here tonight. You need a Savior. You've got one. You're here tonight. You're lost. You need to be saved. You can be saved tonight. He'll, he'll come right to where you are tonight. He'll bind up your wounds. Those wounds that this old world has put on you, the church may have even helped to put some of them on you. But Jesus will bind up your wounds and he'll, he'll put in the oil and the wine and he'll cover it up. I said he'll cover it up. He loves you and he wants to take care of you. Right now, while every head's bowed, there's somebody here tonight say, Preacher, I'm beat up. I'm wounded. I'm destitute. Preacher, I'm in a bad shape. Is there somebody here tonight? I'm, hey, that's all I'm going to say. Somebody say, Preacher. Right now, I've got some things going on in my life. I'm in bad shape. I need that Samaritan you've been talking about to come alongside me. I need some help. I'm in trouble, preacher. i got some problems in my life I need help with. Would you slip your hand up, slip it right back down? Preacher, that's me. That's me. Got all over the house. God bless you. Somebody say, preacher, my marriage is in trouble. Is there something I'm specific? I'm going to ask you right now. Is there somebody right now with every head's bowed would say, Preacher, my marriage is in trouble. My marriage is in a mess. I mean, we're wounding each other. We're hurting each other. Hey, our, our marriage is half dead. Would there be somebody right now slip your hand up and say, Preacher, that's us. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your honesty. Preacher, about half dead. <laughs> oh, I've got good news for you. It ain't as bad as it seems because you're still alive. Oh, he can put the, he can put the oil and the wine in. He can bind your wounds and he can heal you from the inside out. <laughs> Somebody here say, preach, I'm not right with God. I'm hurting in my soul tonight. I'm hurting. Please pray for me. Please pray for me, preacher. Would you do that tonight? Just slip your hand up. Pray for me, preacher. God bless you and you and you and you. Yeah, I see you. God bless you. Preacher, I need help. <laughs> I'm wounded. I'm hurting, preacher. I'm hurting. <laughs> Jesus sent me here to tell you that it's not as bad as it seems. Because help is on the way. <laughs> Help is on the way tonight. It's right here at this altar. Here it is. And if you'll make your way down here tonight, He'll meet you here with everything, <laughs> everything that you need to get you on your way. Anybody else raise your hand for prayer before I pray? Anybody? I got a need, preacher. I got a need. Pray for me. God bless you. God, you see us. <laughs> God, you see us. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
you're moving tonight in this service in a, in a different way. Oh, God, help them to come. Help them to get up now, get up out of their seat, get out of here. Oh, help them to come down where the good Samaritan, help them to come get out of the spout where the Spirit's flowing out. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost will wash away all that mess. Oh, God, it'll do it from the inside out. It'll do it from the inside out, from the inside out. That's where it's got to come. Oh, God, in Jesus' name, help people come. Give them the strength to get up out of their seat, make their way here in Jesus' name. Let's stand together. There's a lot of people coming, but there's still a lot more people that need to come. I want to ask you to step out of your seat. I want to ask you right now. If you raised your hand, I want to ask you to get out here. If you didn't raise your hand, but God spoke to your heart, He dealt with you during this service, I want to ask you to step out of your seat right now and make your way here to this altar while God's speaking to your heart. Would you come right now?